James Kaufman, World News Report today, January 4th, 2025. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been in a geomagnetic storm now for several hours. We'll take a look at the KP indexes first. The Boulder Index says we've been in both a minor and moderate geomagnetic storm for a total of 12 hours, along with three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. If we move to our Fredericksburg KP Index, we see a geomagnetic disturbance ongoing for 15 hours. Next, moving to our estimated planetary index, the upgraded index that NOAA and NASA exclusively use. We've been at a G1, KP5, and KP4.67 geomagnetic storm for nine hours of the day, along with three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. Looking at our college index, well, we've had both a mild, moderate, and, and strong KP indexes, i.e. a geomagnetic storm for the last 15 hours, varying from a G1 to a G2 to a G3, KP5, KP6, and KP7. Now, this was supposed to be about a coronal mass ejection, giving Earth a glancing blow, but I don't think that's what this is at all, as I will soon prove to you. Headed over to our GOES X-ray flux, we see two substantial solar flares. First, right around 6 UTC time, we had a M7.7 solar flare, fairly strong M flare. That was followed up by an X1.85 solar flare. That's going to be right at 120 UTC time, just to guess right now. Those were both generated by our old favorite sunspot from yesterday, AR3947. It is really active. Head over to Space Weather Live. We see the M7.7 pop off at 518 UTC time. But 11.18 last night, and we don't see what time the X1.85 pops off, but I do have information about that on another site. I don't know why they're not assigning it. It came from Sunspot Group AR3947, just like the M7.7 up here, and that is a Beta Gamma Sunspot Group. There's another one here, 3943, that's Beta Gamma. All of the other flares you see here, including the one that happened right before the end of yesterday, the X1.1, were all generated from Sunspot AR3947. We have a 15% chance of having another X-Class solar flare today, a 55% chance of having an M-Class flare. I would have thought that had been much higher. We're currently at a C, 5.36, and we've been running a C baseline for over six months, but they're only giving it a 99% chance of having a C-class solar flare. Now let's take a look at that X1.85 and see where it came from. All right, a quick schematic here. Yesterday, we saw the X1, the X1.1. I believe this is a X1.8 here. Lots of stronger M flares being generated by that same Sunspot Air 3947. We had the M7.7. They're calling it an M8 here. And they're calling this an X2. NASA and NOAA are both calling it an X1.85. I guess that's close enough to X2. But these have all been generated by Sunspot Air 3947 that will soon be directly Earth-facing. Still hard to believe that we don't have any STO or AIA or HDMI up, all because they had one set of servers in a Stanford basement. They got flooded. Very strange. It looks like we have 
about 12 sunspots earth-facing. The latest to be named is 3950. There's all 3947 right there, giving us all the heck. 3947 will take about 12 days to transit the sun, and I guess the next six days are going to be the most important. We also have 3943, which produced a flare, also beta gamma, and we have another sunspot group, 3945, which has been beta gamma now for 48 hours. So we have three sunspots, two basically Earth-facing, that are capable of generating an X-class solar flare, although I've even seen one of these simple green sunspots generate an X-flare. All right, this is the latest hour from our GO Solar Ultraviolet Imager. It looks like we've had another large flare here out of 3947 that has not shown up yet. These coronal holes are what I believe is causing the geomagnetic storm today. We had no glancing blow. We see no plasma on Discover or ACE, as I will show you all. But we called out these coronal holes for possible solar winds up to six and seven hundred kilometers per second, but no one seems to have mentioned that. They're all concentrating on a coronal mass ejection that didn't hit Earth, and I don't know if it even exists. NOAA just redid their Space Weather Prediction Center curve here. They regularly move it up this way, but they didn't do that today. This is the fourth here. They're expecting right about 17 centimeters cubed of plasma. Not very strong, a glancing blow. And they thought that solar winds would start out at about 375 and move up to about 450. Wow, did they blow it. Over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center make sure that everyone knows they're getting their ample dose of radiation today. This is the X1.85 X2 flare that peaked at 1249, which would be about 649 this morning. And we can see that it mainly peaked over the Atlantic Ocean. Now, this is not as bad as most of the X2 flares that I've seen. I mean, it wasn't directly Earth-facing. The radio alternation is not very bad at all, either. Let's all agree upon that. Now, this is where it gets a little bit sticky here. See, the day started right about here. Plasma just barely broke the 10 centimeters cubed space weather threshold. Not even up to 11 here, ladies and gentlemen. There's been no plasma all day long. No, 15 to 17 centimeters of plasma. It's been bumping off the space weather threshold, if you will, of 10 centimeters cubed. I will say that our shields have been down most of the day, which is not good. Here we have solar wind starting the day at right around 450 or 425, and they've gone up to right under 700. We can grab, grab one of these. There's a 669. So there's a 677, just below 700. What I don't like here again is the temperature is moving with the solar winds, not the plasma. Plasma's down here at 1.84. There was no coronal mass ejection that hit Earth. It was the solar winds from the two coronal holes, as I indicated it would be yesterday. Checking our work on ACE, it bumped off here. Right about 0, 0,100 UTC time has bumped off. Space weather alert threshold of 10 centimeters cubed, never gone above it. And what do we have? We have our shields down most all of the day. And we have solar winds moving up from about 425 up to right under 700 kilometers per second so the space weather prediction center got it completely wrong here we also see our temperature moving up with our solar winds not with the plasma that's actually getting weaker and weaker 
although they say we're still in a geomagnetic storm. Mm -hmm. Moving over to Soho 284 Angstroms. Uh, this was taken at 7.06 this morning Central Time. This really lets you see how substantial these coral holes or canopy holes in our solar disk, our sun, are. These winds could go on for at least another day. This was Earth-facing, and this is continuing to be Earth-facing, although things in the Northern Hemisphere don't regularly affect Earth as much. This is quite a large coral hole. Here is 3950, named 3947, and I don't see anything hot coming around the limb this instance. I see some dangerous sunspots leaving. All right, even though it's Saturday, they somehow have actually modeled the M2, M1.85 solar flare, and they have it going off in the same direction as the flare yesterday with a direct hit for Venus here. That should pull whatever atmosphere is on Venus right off of it. We don't see Earth really getting hit by much here. We have some plasma hitting on the 10th. Today's the 4th. That's a six-day forecast. You can see it hit right there. A glancing blow from that CME from today. On the 10th, six days to get here. An X2. Hard to believe. Finally, taking a look at theplanetstoday.com. Here is Earth over here. We have a geomagnetic connection still to Mars, Jupiter, and Uranus. And our moon is in a strange position when it does line up further in the rear or further in front, i.e. the sun being the key magnet in this system. We could see more earthquake activity and volcanic activity especially with two gas giants behind us and Mars in the inner solar system having a geomagnetic connection to Earth as well. That said, God bless you and yours. Please share and subscribe. Always remember that anything's possible. Bizarro world. God bless you all.